KP classes dedicated to excellence. Hello everyone. If you are planning to give PGETA examination this year, roughly one month is left for your last attempt in June. For this, we at KP classes have come up with a detailed understanding of the syllabus for you. So this is going to be in a series out of which today is going to be uh, the first one. So in this series, we are going to tell you how to simplify the syllabus and which areas to focus on in this one month because as you must know, it is impossible for you to study everything under the sun for this examination and that too in just one month. So let's dive into this. First of all, the most important module of your PGETA examination, that is module number one, from where 64 questions out of 100 questions are going to be asked. So this has the maximum weightage and in that also it's huge. Okay, so you must begin with this. Let's say you have already begun with your preparation. Maybe you have given one or two attempts before this. That could be the scenario or maybe you haven't yet begun with your preparation. In both the scenarios for revision or to start with your preparation, you must start with module one. Okay, let's try to simplify uh, the syllabus given under this. First of all, do not study every single thing under this module in just one month. Okay, focus on the areas from where it's highly likely that questions are going to be asked. So first, you should focus on architecture graphics or let's say architecture design. Okay, next, vernacular architecture, structures, building materials and finishes. You have history of architecture which in itself is a very huge topic. Then you have NVC along with that, you can read into barrier free design as well. Then you have landscape and urban design. These are the most important topics from your module number one. Now, under these topics also, you cannot study everything. So we are trying to simplify it for you and we are trying to tell you what to focus on in the first place. Then let's say if you have time, dedicate some time to practice and solving your mock test apart from that you can go into the depth and study more things okay now under architectural design first of all there is color theory from where definitely one or two questions are always asked in most of the competitive examinations okay then you have design principles geometry and perspective and projections okay now what to study in color theory study about first of all the 12 part color wheel from there you can uh, read into the details of what are primary colors secondary colors tertiary colors analogous colors complementary colors split complementary triadic tetradic etc once you have the basic understanding of this then you move on to rgb ryb and cmyk color sets so what are these where is it used uh, why are they different how to you know understand the digital uh, mode of colors and then the physical form of colors all that you will have to study after that you can look into the munsell color scheme okay in which you have to understand what is on the y axis what is on the radial axis what is chroma what is hue what is saturation etc these terms you have to look into these are uh, like the uh, areas from which questions are definitely asked then you can move on to design principles this is not going to take a lot of your time just in half an hour or one hour less than one hour you can complete this entire understanding now on our nata page you have a video by R H Chandra sir he has described everything in detail with respect to color theory and design principles you can check that out as well you will have a comprehensive and 100% understanding of these two topics then you can look into geometry however this may have less weightage than the uh, color part color theory part uh, you can look into platonic solids and archimedean solids then under perspective and projections you have to first understand what is picture plane what is image size how it changes or what is the relationship between them then you can look into parallel projection orthographic projection and oblique projection the basic understanding angles etc you have to understand next vernacular architecture what is vernacular architecture 
that kind of architecture that is locally available somewhere so if it is locally available somewhere why is it available only there or why is it constructed only over there there has to be some reasons for example it could be as a response to the climate it could be because of the material availability in that area the workmanship or the skill so there could be many factors dive into that understand what are the factors understand how it responds to all of these things and since we are talking about local so you have to know the location the state the region the location where these uh, structures are usually found or usually constructed that you have to understand then dive into the design elements for example it is a hot and humid area okay how have they dealt with the walls the fenestrations the roofs etc that you have to understand so wall shape fenestration shading shape size all this you have to understand location you have to understand then material and construction technique you have to understand uh, again on online sources you will have details available but then it is going to be very scattered okay so you will have to dedicate some time to collect the data for this next history of architecture this in itself is a huge topic as you already know okay you will have to dedicate a lot of time to collect the data for this so what you can do is we at kp classes as you already know have come up with pgeta dedicated course you can purchase this and you can have a complete comprehensive preparation for this examination first of all this is going to save a lot of time for you in collecting the data second of all you will have a very good practice also before the examination because we along with the recorded lectures give you a lot of practice questions and test series and mock tests as well okay apart from that you will have your study material too so you can revise multiple times from the study material instead of going to the recorded lecture every time so this is one uh, you know tip that i would give you next indian western and modern or contemporary architecture your history of architecture can be divided into these three now under indian you have to first focus on ibc that is indus valley civilization vedic civilization buddhist islamic and hindu architecture uh, don't study everything just focus on these in islamic buddhist and hindu architecture first of all you have to understand what are the typologies of buildings okay for example in buddhist you have stupa you have viharas and you have chaityas chaitya halls so what are these what are the design elements for that you can study for example stupa okay there is a railing what is it called how is it designed the gate what is it called how is it designed etc so all these elements you have to focus on again islamic architecture may be same thing what are the typologies what are the design elements and you can also understand the reason for giving that uh, design elements apart from that what are the types of domes what are the type of walls arches usually uh, under islamic architecture you can study that and you can focus on the very famous buildings or structures under these okay similarly for hindu architecture you have to repeat this entire process then for western architecture something like chinese japanese you need not focus on that because questions are usually not asked in depth or uh, like very less times questions are asked from that in this one month you can focus on the areas from where maximum number of times questions are asked okay so for example prehistoric you can study in half an hour you will be done with prehistoric studies then your mesopotamian and egyptian civilization then moving on to greek etruscan roman then early christian byzantine roman uh, romanesque sorry gothic baroque again repeating the same thing churches are built what are the elements why things change why new elements got added into the uh, christian architecture or in church architecture you have to understand then last but not the least contemporary architecture okay what happened after uh, or what happened in the recent past so you can study neo classical gothic revival art no art and craft movement modernism and post modernism for modernism and post modernism again you have a lot of things to study under this for example questions are asked a lot of times from deconstructivism okay that you have to study so you have to dive into modernism and post modernism also 
as i told you if you start collecting the data if you start uh, remembering everything learning everything it is going to take a lot of time so i would suggest you take up our pg eta focused course that is going to make your life very easy okay moving on to the next topic structures usually if you look into the questions asked in competitive exams usually you will find a lot of numericals in this theek hai but doesn't mean that you don't have to study theory theory questions can also be asked based on very basic principles can be asked based on let's say a building and what is its structural style maybe a bridge and what is the structural type etc so you have to dive into the theory questions as well for this next building material and finishes um uh, this is comparatively easier topic because you have studied everything in depth in your bachelor's time so you can dedicate for example something like one day or half a day to this and you will be good to go what are the materials in ancient times what were the materials used and you have to trace its history to what are the type of materials used today everything you have to study and definitely finishes is something that you already know and will be very quickly you will be able to understand now uh, this this is with respect to understanding the syllabus and simplifying the syllabus what kind of questions can be asked a few of the examples from each of these section also we are going to tell you but in the next video which we are going to come up very soon with okay then you have nbc and barrier free design nbc is a very big document you cannot study everything so what we suggest is you focus first on part 3 and under part 3 also you focus on definitions first and then you fo focus on some standards for example what is the uh, minimum width of a particular room what is the minimum area for a uh, room what is the height uh, travel distance door widths okay staircase widths all these standards you can study first apart from definitions from part 3 then you can focus on part 4 which is to do with your fire safety part okay again don't study everything uh, keep in mind the previous year questions now pg eta does not give you provide you with the previous year questions what you can do is check for example gate examination check isro upsc dda these kind of examination papers are available easily online check what kind of questions have been asked previously from there you start studying fire safety again you won't be able to cover everything under that so be very strategic with respect to that after that if let's say time permits you you can look into acoustics part you can look into lighting part you can look into uh, escalators and elevators part okay again not in detail just basic understanding based on the previous year questions okay if you take up our pg eta uh course it's very simplified for you and uh, you will be able to cover this entire part very easily and in a very proper manner then second last is landscape again not everything has to be studied on the landscape what you can do is dedicate some time to understand the basic terms for example what is pruning what is topiary what is mulching all these things you can study apart from that scientific names are also usually asked in your competitive exams so the famous trees and shrubs and herbs you can focus on in this not everything you will be able to study then what are hedges what are shrubs and herbs all that you can study and with respect to the climate or with respect to the region or location you can study which type of trees are found where you can also study the form of trees for example columnar round cylindrical all these type of trees uh, form you can study questions are usually asked from this topic as well after that you have to study landscape styles so like we studied for history that you don't have to study everything under landscape styles also you don't have to study everything focus on let's say the chinese architecture japanese not architecture sorry landscape architecture 
Chinese landscape architecture, Japanese architecture, Egyptian you can focus less on, then Mughal, Persian, English, French, all these type of landscape styles are very important from your exam point of view. So first study that, okay? Then you can go on to architects and their work. Like in history, you have the contemporary uh, style. Under that, for example, uh, you can study about Louis Sullivan, you can study about F.L. Wright, Mies van der Rohe, etc. In Indian context, you can study about B.B. Doshi, Charles Correa, Raj Reval, and so on. And for uh, landscape architecture also, you have to keep in mind the very famous projects you have to learn them and who was the architect and a basic principle of the landscape design that you will have to study first you should prioritize on this this is not going to take a lot of time this will take some time but yes it is very important from your exam point of view so dive into that last is your urban design now if you have basic understanding of urban design if you have uh, let's say you take our pgta course and if you've dedicated let's say four hours to urban design studies it is going to be more than enough it, it's a highly scoring area and you're going to do very do good with it but it's slightly uh, you can say confusing when it comes to the terms for example urban structure urban form urban tissue urban fabric you have to understand the difference between these okay then uh, urban green okay all these terms you need to know after that sky view factor or let's say baf figure ground reverse figure ground all this you need to know first of all then theories again these are very simple very easy theories based on your day-to-day -day understanding or day-to-day -day observation you can easily understand these theories okay focus first on imageability like 70 percent of the time in the competitive examinations you will find at least one question based on imageability by kevin lynch then focus on serial vision and then you can look into proximix theory uh, contributions of jane jacob christopher alexander lewis mumford you can study acoustics all these things okay and last you can study about let's say urban design of indus valley civilization greek roman uh, renaissance baroque and so on and you can understand the design or let's say planning of a few cities or famous cities for example paris new york chandigarh all these things okay but that should be dealt uh, last in the urban design once you have the basic understanding once you have the theories these are going to make much more sense okay so this was the simplification of your module one 64 questions is what we are looking at dedicate some time to this or maximum time to this i would rather say and you uh, or the chances of you scoring very good marks in pg eta will be very high okay so that's it for this video next video we are going to come up as i told you with uh, practice questions or let's say sample questions for module number one so stay tuned with us on our youtube channel and do not forget to subscribe thank you so much kp classes dedicated to excellence